Hello and welcome. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. For our opening song, Dave Street, Team Rector of Bucknell, is going to lead us in singing You Alone Can Rescue. save themselves their own soul could heal a shame was deeper than the sea your love is deeper still Ooh, oh Lord
This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We've come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song we will praise our God. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Collect. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not our hold on things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Bible reading is from the Apostle Paul's letter to Titus, chapter 3, beginning to read at the first verse. Remind them to be submissive to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarrelling, to be gentle, and to show perfect courtesy towards all people. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others and hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Saviour appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Saviour, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The saying is trustworthy, and I want you to insist on these things, so that those who have believed in God may be careful to devote themselves to good works. These things are excellent and profitable for people. It's been said that we live in a throwaway society with expanding mountains of landfill to prove it. But most of us still find it satisfying when instead of being thrown away or replaced, something can be restored one of the biggest TV hits over the last few years has been The Repair Shop, with viewers gaining equal pleasure from, well, first seeing the different stages of the repair process unfold, and then, towards the end, the finished product being revealed to its grateful owner. 
good as new, not generally in the sense of it looking like a brand new replacement, that would rather defeat the purpose of the show, but rather restored to full working order and smart appearance, with any remaining signs of its vintage and added attraction. And the Bible speaks in many places of the Lord's work in renewing and restoring both our lives and indeed our world. In the Apostle Paul's letter to Titus, he speaks of the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. On the repair shop, as far as I can see, an item isn't very often washed, but it will much of the time be cleaned in some way, maybe with soap and water or perhaps a solvent delicately applied to remove decades or even centuries of accumulated grime. And the Christian faith speaks both of the need of a similar cleansing and the way it's available, the way the Lord delights to wash us clean. The Apostle Paul uses strong words in explaining why this is necessary, writing initially, at one time we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. At times we'll recognise this as part of our predicament. When we say or we think, I've been such a fool. When we know that we're choosing to do something that's disobedient to God or maybe even fall short of our own moral code, when we know that we're not in control of our own lives. In the 21st century, we're more likely to speak of being addicted than enslaved, but it can amount to something very similar. There's some drink or drugs or overeating or even normally good things like exercise or enjoying a particular kind of music have a power, a grip on our lives that, that seems outside our control. We used to say we were a nation of TV addicts. Now there's an awareness that scrolling our various devices can have even more of a hold over us. Paul then adds... We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. Most of us might not see ourselves as malicious people, and we may well be uh, very good at putting on a polite face. But underneath our thoughts about others can be very unsympathetic and critical. The Lord Jesus, in his own day, rubbed up against many people who were scrupulous about following the rules that their own religion had developed and who criticised him and his disciples when they didn't keep to the same set of standards. The initial point of contention were, were dietary rules and washing rituals that a person was considered to be required to observe. But Jesus replied by pointing out that was in danger of distracting us from what really mattered in God's sight. Do you not see, he said, that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him, since it enters not his heart, but his stomach, and is expelled. Thus he declared all foods clean. And he said, what comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, wickedness, adultery, coveting, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and they defile a person. It's been put, the heart of the human problem is the problem of the human heart. But the good news of the gospel is that God's cleansing and indeed his freedom is available. The Apostle Paul speaks of these things having a hold over his life in the past, but not now. Not that he would have considered himself or, or Titus, the man he was writing to, to be perfect. But nonetheless, he can celebrate the fact that the Lord had saved us, not because righteous things we'd done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. Washing is a powerful picture, first of all, of the forgiveness that God gives for our wrongdoing. That's a vitally important blessing that comes as soon as we put our faith in Jesus. But washing also begins to speak of the way that actual change is in time possible. 
And not just washing, but renewal too. On the repair shop, when an item is brought in that isn't working in the way that it's supposed to, the team of experts will often identify parts which don't only need smartening up, they need to be renewed. Sometimes that can be achieved by repairing the part, or perhaps a spring or a gear wheel or a catch needs to be replaced. And though it's occasionally something that's available off the shelf, very often the producers will show us a new part being carefully made by hand. And the end result? Well, that TV show will often talk about the treasured item being given a new lease of life. Indeed, the language used and the joy exhibited sometimes isn't far short of the Bible's talk of rebirth and renewal in our lives. The particular phrase that Jesus himself used to describe this speaks about the need for each one of us to be born again by water and the Spirit. For a variety of reasons, that language sets some people's teeth on edge, I know. But what it's describing is surely even more attractive than the best of the repair shop's restorations. Despite our departing from his ways, God is longing not to replace us, but by the power of the Holy Spirit to renew us from within. Whatever the past, he hasn't given up on us, and he longs that we will come to him, seeking the cleansing and the new birth that's now available through the saving work of Jesus, by asking him to send his Holy Spirit into our lives to transform us in this miraculous way. Here and now, this is generally a spiritual repair process. Though believers are sometimes blessed with the gift of wonderful healings in answer to our prayers, and of course Jesus and his first apostles performed a multitude of miracles. But the reality remains that here and now, most of us will at some point in our lives experience struggles with our physical health. In 2 Corinthians 4, Paul's reflection is that uh, believer or not, in this life, outwardly we are to borrow his blunt language, wasting away. But he goes on to add at the same time that for those who belong to Christ, our inner self is being renewed day by day. Nonetheless, we mustn't forget the promise of an even more complete renewal in the future, that when Jesus returns, that spiritual renewal and rebirth that we experience in this life will be accompanied by a full physical restoration, both of our world and of those who belong to him. The book of Revelation speaks of how, at that time, the Lord's declaration will be, Behold, I'm making all things new. Having spelt out that in the new order, death shall be no more, neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. Indeed, what's promised here is an even better and fuller physical restoration than the experts we see in the repair shop can manage. Because even the best of their restorations will one day, if they're used, almost certainly again wear out and therefore need to be repeated. Whereas the promise that the scriptures give is that when Jesus returns to bring in God's new order in its fullness... Those who trust in him will be given a complete physical restoration. They'll be transformed into bodies that no longer ever know pain or suffering or malfunctioning or deterioration. And what's more, each one of us is invited to take ourselves to the Lord's repair shop, to ask for his Holy Spirit to cleanse us and make us new from within. Jane Machen is going to lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Creator God, we thank you for your many good gifts, for the beauty of creation and its rich and varied fruits, for clean water and fresh air, for food and shelter, animals and plants. 
Forgive us for the times we have taken the earth's resources for granted and wasted what you have given us. We pray for those living in areas of the world that are short of natural resources, especially water, and those living in areas prone to natural disaster. We thank you for those who have contributed to the building of our churches and those who have worshipped in them through the years. We pray for those who have attended one or many services, but who do not or cannot attend regularly now. We pray for those who have moved away or who now go to another church. We pray for the life of our churches, that they may provide spiritual nourishment, encouragement and fellowship. We pray for the people of our communities, that they may be drawn to our churches and find a warm welcome, that those who walk past or drive past will find the courage and an opportunity to come inside. We pray for our church leaders and those who produce our recorded worship, giving thanks for the technology that enables us to worship and be part of your church when we are unable to be physically present. We thank you, Lord, that we are free to worship without fear or consequence. We pray for Christians around the world who have to hide their faith and who cannot openly worship you. We pray for their safety and the spreading of your word. We pray for the work of the Bible Society and give thanks for their supporters and volunteers as they translate, produce and distribute the Bible around the world, supporting literacy and teaching programmes, making your word accessible and understood both at home and abroad. We pray for renewed well-being the Welcoming Café recently opened at St Andrews. We give thanks for the team who run it and we pray for those who have visited it. We pray that those in need of a safe space and a friendly face will find our door and venture in. We pray for all churches who, who open their doors during the week to be a place that people can go to, whatever their need or circumstance that they will experience your love in action and be drawn to you through the work of the Holy Spirit. We pray for all in need, for those who suffer in body, mind or spirit, and we bring to mind those known personally to us. We pray for those restless souls in search of peace, for the lonely, for those who mourn, for those who are searching for something more in life, for those nearing the end of their life, for those who are no longer as active as they were or would like to be, for those with financial worries. We pray, Lord, that you will lift their burden and help them to see a way forward. Bring comfort and peace to this troubled world and especially we pray for those who have no home or who are far from home. We pray for our families and those we hold dear. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. May the Holy Spirit work in us and through us, that your light may shine in this world as a beacon of hope. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us and those for whom we care this day and always. Amen.
the blessing. May the Spirit who hovered over the waters when the world was created breathe into us the life he gives. May the Spirit who overshadowed the Virgin when the Eternal Son came among us make us obedient in the service of the Lord. May the Spirit who inflamed the church upon the day of Pentecost set the world on fire with the love of the risen Christ and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and those we care for today and evermore. Amen.